history has shown that the peasant class in ancient days, when they had revolted, was just easily crushed. There was no resistance. on them hard, and what they're beginning to realize is something that you and I have said for years, that this is really an intentional criminal endeavor, and they've been had. The problem is quite simple. Anarchy and chaos prevails in Washington, D.C. because the federal government has seized powers to which it is not entitled to and is passing masses of laws that are 100% unconstitutional. And when you get men setting themselves up as greater than the Constitution of the United States, you get anarchy and eventually tyranny. Now I'm paranoid. I'm going to admit to you right up front. But let me tell you what the real meaning of the word paranoid is. It is a man or a person who has the ability to link events that seemingly are not connected. That is the true meaning of paranoia. Of course it's being used by our enemies to smear us. How many times haven't I heard it said of me, that fellow is paranoid. Yes, I'm glad to admit it because I have the ability to connect events that are seemingly unconnected. And when you do that, you begin to arrive at the truth. One of the biggest things I discovered in my work was the existence of a supranational committee composed of 300 men. These 300 men in the committee of 300 run the world today with an iron fist. Their wealth is untold, cannot be measured. I know I looked at some of the, the records that I could find in Italy, in Rome. These people are so wealthy that they would make David Rockefeller look like a piker. That is how rich they are. And this is the committee that runs the world. This is a supranational body that knows no boundaries, respects the laws of no countries. So the goals are a one world dictatorship of the most brutal kind and how they carry it out as they have these interface banks, insurance companies, mining conglomerates, every conceivable control in politics. All our national security bills and foreign policy bills are all written by APAC, a dangerous lobby, as well as the Jinsta crowd and other groups who pushed us into a war with Iraq. Our country has been hijacked. The federal government, the secret upper level parallel government that runs the United States, does not want to know that you have an upper level parallel government that calls the shots, that dictates what is going to happen to your life and mine. 
And this, ladies and gentlemen, is an eye-opener because it gets right down to the nitty-gritty of your everyday life in the cities and towns across the United States. Now, let us dispose for once and for all with the words that have been implanted on our minds like isolationist and you are for restricted trade and you are against global trade. The United States of America did not grow great on global trade. The United States of America grew great on the hard labor of the people who lived in those days and the wise protection barriers put up by President George Washington because immediately after the war they tried the British to try to down the United States through so-called free trade which is nothing but piracy. Free trade, ladies and gentlemen, is a one-way street which allows other countries to dump their products on our markets to the detriment of our own people. That's what free trade is. It's strictly a one-way street. The trade barriers were increased by Lincoln, Garfield, and McKinley. And all three presidents paid with their lives for that policy. Our founding fathers and our presidents saw the value of trade barriers. They realized that if we wanted to progress, we're not to be the dumping ground of the world. The only way this country is going to come back is to bring manufacturing back home. I'm sorry, I'm not an isolationist, so sure. it's not about that at all. It's about putting America first, and we have to do that. This isn't free trade. Everybody forgets that we're dealing with communist China over there, and they're really rigging the game. You have anybody in China knows the deal. You have to buy everything from another Chinese company. There's no free trade out there. You know, we, we drove by a giant Walmart. And I said, that is a vacuum cleaner. That is a money machine, a money vacuum cleaner. Every, it pulls in all this money from the local community. And at midnight, somebody pushes a button and all that money goes to Bentonville, Arkansas. And then 15 minutes after midnight, another gets button, button gets pushed and a good chunk of that money, probably 50, 60, 70% of it goes and goes to China. This committee of 300 told a man called Aurelio Pecky to form this club of Rome with the main object of bringing down the industries and the agricultural development of the United States. He immediately wrote a paper in which he said there are too many people on the earth and that the United States with its industrial development, its agricultural re development is responsible for this curse of overpopulation and he picked up the documentation for his work from Lord Bertrand Russell, a senior statesman of the Committee of 300. And Lord Bertrand Russell had written a work called The Impact of Science on Society. And if you can ever secure a copy of that book, which I doubt you'll be able to get, you will see in there that he said, the world is overpopulated and we have to get rid of at least half of the world's population. And it doesn't matter how we do it. So the Club of Rome, was instituted and organized to start an attack on the world's population using the United States as the whipping boy. And they came up with a paper called the Zero Growth Post-Industrial Plan for Industry and Agriculture for the United States of America. Three days after that plan was accepted as official United States policy by James Earl Carter, I was able to, through my intelligence people, get 
a copy of this insidious document. Basically what it said was that the middle class in the United States of America had to be destroyed because in the coming push to world order, the middle class would be the stumbling block because history had shown that the peasant class in ancient days, when they had revolted, were just easily crushed. There was no resistance. But now had grown a new super class of people in the United States called the middle class, who had long-term employment, who had job security, who were well paid, who could afford to buy the products that were made by the United States and didn't need to buy products from China or anywhere else. And the Club of Rome post-industrial zero growth paper said, this has got to stop. We have to bring down the middle class of the United States. And the way that we will do this, the way that we will accomplish this task is by crushing their industry. The American people henceforth must get used to the idea that they will never ever again in their lifetime have full employment. What a scandalous thing that our government is fully cooperating with this organization built up by the Royal Institute for International Affairs to destroy the middle class of the United States and to add to the policies of global genocide. for countries because they can sell their products cheaper than uh, rich countries and that allows them to try Some and catch up. Some people are afraid of free trade because they think it might hurt their business. But in reality, do what you do helps. best and trade for the rest. I think it creates more jobs. I think when it creates jobs, people can feed their families. They can feed their families. They're I happy. Mean, where does all this stuff in these stores come from? They're from Old Navy and they were $25, so I'm sure they're from <laughs> We export Indonesia. items and we get imported items. In free trade. History has shown that the peasant class in ancient days, when they had revolted, were just easily crushed. There was no resistance.